Um, hi, boys and girls. Um, in the story that you're just about to hear, every now and again, a blue screen will pop up um, with a question on it. Uh, when this does, pause the video, have a look at the question, think about the um, think about the answers. Um, if you can, write some answers down. If you want to use your literacy homework book, then that's a very, very good idea. And um, just see how you get on. The Adventure of Gwendolyn Arthur stood outside the door to his home and looked at the wooden frame. Although the wood was many years old, it was still very strong. The roof, which had a few holes, was made of straw tied together with twine. He remembered his mother telling him what twine was when he was much younger. We cut down plants, she said, which are bendy but strong, and then we tie them together with good knots. Although it was springtime, the wind was strong and it made Arthur shiver. Last night it had rained constantly and made Arthur very, very wet. When he looked at the sky, which was now clear and blue, he hoped that it would not rain any more that day. He heard noises from different homes in the village. Some children were running around, chasing their ducks and hens for fun. Because of this, Arthur could hear their mothers yelling at them to stop. Further away, he could see women slowly walking to the river, carrying metal pots, which they would fill with water for the day's cooking. Near to the trees, some men were cutting wood for axes and swords. The men, dressed in leather trousers and tunics, were also shouting at the children. Near to the barn where the wood and the, f and the food was kept, two men were making horseshoes. Arthur could hear the clang, clang, clang of the hammer as it bent the metal into shape. He could also see some horses, scared by the sound of the hammer, trying to run away. At this point, he also heard his horrible sister, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn was three years older than Arthur and he hated her. She had long blonde hair and was always showing off how colourful her dress was. The fact that it was made of the same animal skin as Arthur's tunic showed how boastful she was. My eyes remind me of the colour of the sky on a beautiful summer's day, she sang, making Arthur want to feel sick. Arthur knew that she had never seen her own eyes. How could she possibly know? It was true that Gwendolyn was cleverer and stronger than Arthur in many ways. She could lift heavier bowls of water from the river she could carry bigger stones for her father when they needed to repair the walls. She could ride horses much better than he could, even though she would never be allowed to when she grew up. And she could kill, skin and cook a rabbit much faster than her small brother would ever be able to do. Gwendolyn who was so happy because her father was going to take her on a special task today, was singing as she prepared herself. She collected the things that she would need, small axe for cutting twine, her father's large axe and shield, just in case, some leftover meat from yesterday, as she knew they would be gone all day. As she and her father walked into the woods, she was very quiet, and respectful. Her father was usually grumpy and didn't smile very much. She knew she didn't like it she knew he didn't like her to sing or chatter a lot, and so she didn't. She kept very close to him so she could hear him when he told her what to do. After a few minutes they stopped. They began to look for the special plant they needed. Remember, 
said her father. Bendy and very strong. I don't want my axe falling apart in battle. As quickly and as quietly as she could, she searched through the trees and plants. She knew that the best twine came from the plants which grew near to the trees, the, the trunks of the tallest trees. My stupid brother would never be able to do this, she thought to herself. She looked around to see where her father was. Seeing that he was a few paces away, she decided it would be safe to sing very quietly. Maybe it was the birds singing, maybe it was the warm spring day, or maybe it was just the fact that she was concentrating so hard on what she was doing. Whatever the reason, Gwendolyn suddenly realised that she could no longer hear her father mumbling away to himself. In a panic, she looked up at the trees. She tried to remember which way she had been walking. Was it towards the sun or away from it? Had she passed these plants with the light blue flowers or not? At this point, she wished that she had her little brother with her. Although he was stupid and annoying and very smelly, he knew every single plant and flower in the forest. She knew that if she wandered too far away, she may never be able to find her father again. And who knows what will become of her. Dad, help me, she whispered. And then amazingly, she heard herself whisper, Arthur, help me. Gwendolyn was terrified. She had never been lost in the woods before. Never been, <clears throat> never been away from her father. Never wished so strongly that her brother would appear and help her. She closed her eyes. She had heard from the stories that her grandfather had told her that you could sometimes wish for something and it would appear. She didn't believe it at the time, but now she was desperate. She kept her eyes closed until they began to hurt. She was ready to tell Arthur what happened when she realised that it was not true. She felt annoyed at her grandfather because he had given her false hope. After she had calmed down a little bit, she started to look at the plants near the trunks of the tallest trees. Some of them had been chopped with a small axe. Quicker than lightning from the gods in the sky, she realised what this meant. She looked around and found some more plants, which had also been chopped, and then some more, then more. She was beginning to think that her troubles were over when she saw that there were no more plants which she had chopped. She was still lost. She sat down, cried, put her head in her hands, and began to think she would never get out of the woods. A second later, she changed from scared to terrified. She could hear someone. He was coming towards her. He had an axe. She knew because he could. she could hear it being swung at the trees nearby. Closer he came. I will die, she whispered to him herself. Unfortunately not said Arthur. He explained how she had taken so long that he thought she must have got lost in the woods and so had decided to come and look for his sister. Well, that's the end of the story, uh, Gwendolyn's Adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you managed to answer uh, some of the questions. If you didn't get to answer all of them, then don't worry. Don't forget, you can go back and watch the video again and again. And of course, you can ask uh, other people at home to help you. I'm sure um, in these uh, busy in these times, um, they will be glad of something uh, to to do. So get uh, get mums and dads or older brothers and sisters to help you as well. 
Okay, um, that's all from me. Don't forget, stay safe, stay soapy. Bye-bye.